Hey guys, welcome to therevitkid.com. So, this is the second part of our family creation tutorial. And in the first part, we created this parametric cube, which is movable by different parameters and different dimensions that we gave it. So, I'll just show you again real quick. Here's our elevation view, here's our floor plan view, and here's our 3D view. So if I grab this dimension and pull it, you can see our entire cube changes. <clears throat> so this is going to be a simple tutorial as well, but like I said, it should help. We are going to turn this cube into a coffee table or an end table, whatever you want to call it. And the first step to any family creation, um, as I said in the first one, is setting up your reference planes. So I'm going to take the reference planes I already had and I'm going to copy them. So I'm going to use copy or CO as the keyboard shortcut. And let's say it's going to be a two inch leg. Or let's make it a little bigger. A four inch leg. <clears throat> so now this leg, this reference plane is going to uh, control the thickness of our leg this way. And now we need a reference plane the other way, so I'm just going to copy this, go up four inches, do the same thing over here, just copying reference planes, and copy reference planes. Now, if you want that leg thickness to actually change and have a parameter, you can give it a parameter by dimensioning it. So let's dimension it. DI for dimension. I'm going to dimension these these uh, reference planes here. Now we could give all these a parameter and actually drive them uh, through family types if we wanted, which we'll do right now. I'll leave this one out of it so I can show you what else we can do. <clears throat> so we're going to go to label and we're going to add a parameter. I'm going to say leg thickness. Say OK. So now you can see these all have the leg thickness parameter. So now we want to test that parameter. We can change the leg thickness to 2 inches. Click apply. And you can see how they shrink. Let me do that one more time. 4 inches. Now watch these reference planes on the inside. Apply. And now they change. <coughs> or if the leg thickness is going to stay the same, we could simply lock the dimension. So if I click this dimension here and I click lock on it, that means these reference planes are always going to stay at 4 inches. And an example of that is if I change this dimension by pulling it, you can see how the leg distance actually screwed up. You see the leg thickness up there, but this one locked. <clears throat> and that's why you kind of want to um, use the lock command if you know it's not going to change. So you can see the, see the parameters and everything moving here. And the reason for that is this reference plane was staying, this one was moving, and these were all driven by it. So if I was to simply say this is 4 inches, say this is 3 foot 2 inches, click apply. Now if I was to change this, 4 inches should stay. 4 inches stayed. So it was only because I was pulling it there. Um, for the sake of this, let's use all parameters leg thickness. So you can see the center of the leg thickness parameter now. <clears throat> so now we have our cube and we have our reference planes for our legs. Now in our front view we're going to want a thickness of a tabletop. So now I'm in the front view. Now we're going to want our top and how thick we want it. So I'm going to take this reference plane and I'm going to copy it down. Now let's make this four inches too. And this one I'm just going to dimension and I'm going to lock it. We're going to say that we don't need, need a parameter for the thickness of the table. You could easily make a parameter here. You can go to uh, label and add parameter. So now when this height changes, you'll see that reference plane moves with it, which is exactly what we want. So let's put this height at two feet. Let's make the table a square for now. Now my floor plan, you can see we've got a square. We've got all our reference planes set up. Now we want to start manipulating our geometry. So right now we have a square. Now there's two ways we can go about this, and I'm going to show you both ways. 
Um, one is we can make extrusions for the legs, and the other is creating voids to chop this cube into the legs. Pretty much the same results. Um, depending on the complexity of your family, you might want to use one instead of the other, but I'll show you both right now. So I'm in my top view now, and I'm going to create a void extrusion. Now you could do this in a top view, or you could do this in a side view, um, depending on how your mind feels like going about it. I'm going to do it in the top view, because I can do both of them this way. And there's actually two voids that we can do too. We can do two squares, or we can just do one single void. I'm going to do one single void for the sake of this, this um, tutorial. Now usually when I do stuff like this, I'll actually do two rectangles and trim them out. And the reason being is you get the locks automatically. So if I go, if I draw my rectangle from inside to inside, I actually wanted to go inside to inside in here. So I went to void extrusion, and I'm drawing my extrusion. Oh no, we want rectangles like this, that's right. And now we get the locks that pop up. So now we can lock this, lock this, and lock this. Then we can do the same thing here. And now we have more locks, so I'm just locking it to reference planes. Now if you try to create an extrusion now, they'll throw an error, but that's okay. We're going to trim this now, so I'm going to use the trim command. Actually, first we're going to split. SL is split, or up in the top. Um, up on the top, you can split it. So I'm going to type SL. I'm just going to split this, split this, split this. And the reason I'm doing this is just for the sake of these two sides are now locked. So now when I use TR for trim, I can trim this, trim this, and trim here. And all of these are now actually locked to reference planes. Um, we could have just drawn this shape, but then we'd have to go back and make sure every single component is locked. So there's different ways you can go about it. Um, so let's finish this. Now I created a void. Let me go in 3D and show you what happened. You can see the void inside here. If I select this, you can see the void in that orange color there. So now the void is actually chopping our piece. If I came all the way up, you'd see it completely chopped it. But we don't want to come all the way up. We're trying to make this as efficient as possible. <clears throat> so in our front view now, we can select that void and we can pull it up to our reference plane and lock it. So now we have it all locked. If I go in 3D, you can see we've got this table here. And because we used our reference planes and we already tested them, I know that if I change the width to 7 feet, you can see our table grew to 7 feet. If I change the width to back to 4 feet, apply. And we also have the leg thicknesses, so if we change the leg thickness to something shorter, so if you watch the legs, click apply, the legs shrink. Six inches, apply, they grow. So that's a simple little coffee table. Um, the other method for creating the legs would be, instead of using a void, I'm going to delete the void now, we would create an extrusion. First we want to just use this extrusion as our tabletop. So I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to lock it to here. So we have this thin tabletop. So in 3D you can see we have this tabletop. <clears throat> in our floor plan now, we're going to go to home. We're going to create an extrusion. And now I'm in the sketch mode and I'm going to lock it in the sketch mode again. Um, like I said, you don't always have to lock it in the sketch mode, but um, if for family creation I prefer it. So if I draw here, I can lock all these. So I'm just going to lock, lock, lock. I'm using rectangles again. I'm going to sketch here. Oopsies. I'm going to sketch here, lock it, over here and lock it, and up here and lock it. So it looks like there's locks everywhere, but really the only ones that you need to worry about are the ones that are opened, because the other ones actually apply to everything else that you sketch. So now we have our three pink sketches here, sketch lines, as you can see. If I click Finish, it's going to create extrusions. So if I go in 3D, here's our extrusion that we created. And the reason I did it in one sketch is because now you can move these extrusions independently as I'm pulling them here. So if we go into our front view now, and we pull this up and we lock it, 
We actually locked it to geometry. You could lock it to the reference plane. It doesn't matter. You can see we have a tabletop, exactly like the other one. And if you want to get rid of these lines, you can actually join the materials. So under Modify, you click Join Geometry, select the legs, select the top, and you can see we're joined. Now we have the exact same shape. We just went about it a little bit different of um, a little bit different path. So now if I go to my family types, I change the leg thicknesses to eight inches. Click Apply. You can see our leg thicknesses grow back to four. If I go to length, I can go to eight feet. Click Apply, and you can see it actually goes. <clears throat> so that's a simple little coffee table. I hope this helps out. Um, I know it would have for me if I was still beginning. And please remember to email, comment, and subscribe. I will talk to you guys later.